Hello everyone, Michael Reed Gaming here. <laughs> you already know, um, if you've already read the title, you already know what you're getting into. Today we are doing another Michael Reed Looks Back slash Michael Reed Revisits series. And, uh, yeah, I know that if you've read the title, it's a bit, it's a bit soon, right, to be doing a revisit video. But let me take a quick moment to precipice why I'm doing this revisit as early as I am. First and foremost, the initial playthrough, and I'm going to be brutally honest here, I'm going to be 110% with you guys when I say this, that series, especially the latter episodes, were quite rushed. And reason why I rushed them is, first and foremost, I wanted to make sure that that got out in time for when I wanted those videos to come out. And two, it's, it's it, due to how I recorded that initial video, which literally was the backdrop was just a wall. <laughs> I know, pretty, pretty, pretty low even for me. Um, I decided that since it was so rushed, and since it actually did surprisingly well, especially the first episode, I think the first episode got roughly around 20 or so views, which is actually fairly good compared to how I was expecting it to be initially received, which was barely, I thought I was going to get barely any views, but surprisingly, you guys came through and gave that first video 20 views, and I think that whole series in general did pretty darn well, especially for my first playthrough, or let's play of a Nintendo game, let alone a game in what feels like forever. So, with that being said, I want to give you guys sort of a definitive way to watch this playthrough, right? As you guys can see, the camera view is definitely different. Uh, I have the backdrop there, which if you may have noticed, there is a new addition to my little display. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute to quickly figure out what it is. If you haven't figured it out already, wow. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's right there. But anyway, so um, there's a little Metroid there now, which uh, I'm kind of debating if I want to do a review on that little Metroid there because um, there's not really much to it. I mean, it's just a little figure. It's nothing too terribly crazy. But um, you guys let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do a review on that uh, little Metroid uh, in a future video. But anyway, with that being said, uh, let's hop right in. And actually, wait, before we hop in, there's one last thing I gotta say, and that is that later this month, I will be doing a Let's Play on this game's sequel slash continuation of the story. That is, which, uh, spoilers, Metroid Dread. I'm gonna be playing that next. So definitely keep your keep your eyes peeled for that, as that is gonna be coming out. And uh, spoilers are definitely going to be um, again, gonna be in place for this because Metroid Dread is still a fairly new game. Samus Returns as well is fairly new. So if you don't want to get spoiled on the story for this, definitely don't watch this playthrough and don't watch my other playthrough either when that comes out later this month because that is, again, gonna be very spoiler heavy in that. So with that being said, let's hop right in and let's revisit this classic 3DS title, shall we? So here we go, Metroid Samus Returns. Let's do this. Let me make sure I got the screen right there. Nice and in frame. And let's do this. All right, so we're just gonna be going down here. We're going to, you know what? We're gonna start a new game here. And we are going to do normal mode, because last time we did hard mode, but this time I don't think I want to go completely torture. But yeah, let's just get right into it. So we start off with the intro here. In the year 20x5 of the Cosmic Calendar, a Galactic Federation research team discovered an unknown life form on planet SR-388. While they were able to successfully obtain a living sample, their research vessel was attacked by space pirates during their voyage home. And this attack was no coincidence. The space pirates had set their sights on these mysterious organisms called Metroids. They planned to replicate and sample replicate the sample, sorry, and exploit its ability to absorb the energy of any life form. Their intention was to use Metroids as a weapon, one powerful enough to conquer the entire galaxy. 
To combat this threat, the Galactic Federation uh, dispatched a lone bounty hunter to infiltrate the space pirate base on, on planet Zebes. Against all odds, Samus Aran eradicated the Metroids on Zebes and defeated Mother Brain, the leader of the Space Pirates, and Southern Sinister plans with Wood of War Time. By the way, for those who may be in the dark already, uh, this is essentially a recap of Samus's previous mission here. In this case, was the original Metroid from the NES, 1986, or, of course, the 2004 remake Metroid Zero Mission. So, that's what this is talking about. <laughs> Concerned by these developments and the great threat of the Metroid species, Metroid species still, still posed to the galaxy, sorry, the Galactic Federation mounted another expedition to SR388. A special squadron of elite soldiers from the Galactic Federation police were dispatched to investigate. By the way, Galactic Federation is the government body in this universe. I already said that in my previous playthrough, but anyhow. The team soon went missing, but not before transmitting a small sampling of data back to headquarters. Analysis of this data confirmed a Metroid presence within the interior of planet SR388. So long as they continued to exist, these Metroids would forever pose a devastating threat to the galaxy. The resulting decision of the Galactic Federation Council was immediate and unanimous. Samus Aaron, you must exterminate the Metroids once and for all. Alright guys, with that being said, let's get right into the game, shall we? So we get this nice little intro cutscene, so I'm just going to shut up and let you guys enjoy the cutscene. Alright guys, so as you saw, Samus landed on SR388. Let's begin our adventure here. So right away, the music and visuals are absolutely stunning for 3DS. And honestly, this music right here is just simply beautiful. Because honestly, this song just sounds like Metroid's waking up from its slumber. Because at the time this game came out, it had been a solid seven years since the last Metroid game was released. In this case, Metroid Other M on the Wii. So, yeah, it was it was a quite a dark time for, for Metroid fans. But thankfully, this game came out and just revitalized interest not only in Metroid in general, but also revitalized interest in Metroid 2 in particular. Because for those who don't know, Metroid um, Metroid 2, the original one from 1991 on the Game Boy, 92, um, and other areas, uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus, th that game was a very underplayed Game Boy game, as just like this game, uh, it was released during the latter half of the uh, console's lifespan, both the Game Boy and the 3DS. And uh, in this case, this game came out 2017, September 15th of that year, I should say. And, um, yeah, and this game, too, kind of fell to that same sort of down that same sort of vein where it was also underplayed and that was mostly just because the Switch was just coming out at the time so yeah this game got very underplayed as well but still this game is just is really really good but you don't need to tell me that I don't need to tell you guys that you guys can already tell just by me just playing right now so we got one of Samus's first abilities in this game which is Morph Ball and I don't really need to tell you guys what it does, because it's pretty self-explanatory. I just crouch twice, and then the Morph Ball does the thing. There you go. So, shoot the door open, and we get another cutscene. Alright, so this segues nicely into this thing. I already explained it in my original playthrough, but I'm going to explain it again here briefly. That right there is a Chozo seal. Now, the Chozo seals were made by the Chozo to essentially uh, keep the Metroids locked on the planet, right? Because 
um, s spoiler alert again, uh, the Chozo actually created the Metroids, and, uh, sent, and, and because they got out of control here on SR388, they had to flood the planet with acid to keep them at bay. But now, uh, that Samus is here, she's the only one that can defeat the Metroids, break those seals, and essentially just, you know, fix the, the Chozo's uh, undertaking here of the Metroids. So, right there we just got a new Aeon ability. That is the, this is the scan pulse I just got. Essentially what it does is it allows you to see hidden blocks. Uh, in the area, which is really nice for new players because if you guys don't know Metroid, this series is, it, it loves backtracking that and it loves just hiding secrets and the methods of progression from you. So you gotta really look around and really keep your eyes peeled for secrets, little holes in the walls and, you know, and, and just in general, you just have to constantly explore these maps and really dig into them but uh to figure out the way forward and to find upgrades and whatnot so right here we have a little cut scene and of course i'm just going to shut up and let you guys enjoy the cut scene All right, so as you guys just saw, uh, we just saw a larva metroid uh, absorb that uh, enemy there. That enemy's called a Hornode, and uh, yeah. Here's something that I didn't point out in my original playthrough. You see that right there? That's that same Hornode that just got killed in that cutscene. They really didn't need to include it there, but I'm glad that they did. It's, that's, it's, it's just really nice attention to detail. So I'm just readjusting my hands here. Oh, and of course, we have the Surface SR388 theme playing right now, which is absolutely amazing. I love this remix. As a matter of fact, it's my ringtone on my phone, actually. As I just love this, this remix of a classic Game Boy track. But, again, just like I did in my original playthrough, I will leave a link to uh, the full OST. So you guys can listen to the music with that, of course, my commentary over it. But, alright, cutscene time yet again. Okay... Alright guys, so this is uh, the first Metroid boss fight in this game. In this case, this is the Alpha Metroid. And this guy goes down pretty quick. Just counter him, miss him a few times, and he is dead. So, uh, for those who, who haven't already figured it out um, uh, from the intro, essentially Samus' mission in this game uh, is to essentially exterminate all 40 Metroids here on Planet SR388. So, uh, yeah, that was the first of many Metroids we're going to be fighting. So, uh, alright, so next up here we get the Charge Beam. Charge Beam's quite useful, I'm not, I'm not going to bother showing the bottom screen again, because, again, I can pretty much explain it right there. Uh, you just press and hold the shoot button, aka the Y button on my DS's bottom half of the screen. And then you just aim and shoot. Keep it plain and simple. Nice little upgrade there. Oh, you can also open doors with it too. Which is always nice. Well, charge being doors, I should say. Blow that up. Okay, open this. Ah, I missed that guy. There we go. Okay, shlinkity dink. Kill that guy. This door. Okay. And, alright, now we can break the Chozo seal, because now we have all the Metroids killed in the area. So, there you go. And, and here's the thing um, about the Chozo seals, if I didn't explain it in uh, my last playthrough, this wasn't in the original uh, Game Boy release, as in that one, the, there was just, the acid just randomly lowered with no real explanation as to why. So it's nice that Mercury Steam actually implemented this new bit of lore. And slash gimmick that uh, actually makes sense uh, to the to the Metroid universe and to this game in general. It just makes perfect sense. 
All right, so next up here, we do get this little teleporter here, which is very nice uh, new addition to Samus Returns because in the original Metroid 2, no two areas really connected seamlessly. So it's nice that there's these teleporters here because in the previous game, there was, first of all, there was no map. And second, you would have to go all the way back to other areas, not only to change beams, uh, which... Uh, of course was really annoying that but also you would have to go back to recharge uh, your energy and missiles it was just really clunky the original release and this game obviously since it's a remake sets to fix all of that but still let's just continue on here with this area so, uh, it, so just like I did before, I am going to try to split these videos up into multiple episodes. And uh, just like I did before, I'm just going to do only a couple areas per episode. And, of course, I'll have links in the description to all the episodes in order of their release, as I did in my last one. So... No real changes there for you guys. So, just hibbity hoobity up here. Okay, kind of this idiot. Alright. So, the, so, that little bat thing and that thing I just shot was a gravit. That is a Mohik, and that is a uh, Gulug. Yeah. The fact I memorized the enemies just shows you how much I love the series, right? On top of the fact that I just have... Samus's face on everything now, so. But anyhow, I'm gonna move swiftly along up this little bit of the passageway here. Kill that guy and shoot this guy a few times if you would come back down, thank you. Okay. So. And you guys may notice as well that just like last time, I am going a bit fast, but that is because this game has a speedrun mechanic, where the faster you complete the game, the, the the better the ending screens will be. As that's been, is actually, funny enough, Metroid not only established uh, this genre of, game, of gameplay style known as a Metroidvania, um, which actually Metroidvania in of itself is actually the portmanteau of two different two different franchises that follow this sort of gameplay style, which those would be Metroid and Castlevania, which is another series I need to try to get into. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Right. Um, uh, really? Did I just lose train of thought again? Yep, I did. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had a little bit of a brain fart of what I was saying there. But... Um, with that being said, let's just swiftly move on here. Hopefully my train of memory will come back to me. But, uh, that's right, I was talking about the speedrun mechanic, that's right. So, speedrun mechanic, right. Metroid was the first, uh, genre, first gameplay series to really coin the term speedrun, right? Where you try to beat a game, if this guy would stop killing me, or trying to kill me, as quickly as possible... Um, yeah, it was the first series to do that, and with this game, it follows suit with the other Metroid games in the series, where the faster you beat the game, the better the ending screen will be. So, uh, there's several different endings for this game, for all three modes of this game, which, of course, last time I showed you guys hard mode. This is normal mode, which is the basic gameplay difficulty. And then, of course, there is fusion mode. But, which I will not be showing you guys because here's the thing. Fusion mode was really stupid in this game because, see, when this game came out, and people still criticize it to this day, uh, they locked this mode, that mode, fusion mode, which is a reference to Metroid 4, Metroid Fusion, um, hence the uh, fusion mode, fusion suit that you use in that mode. Um, what's it? Uh, it was locked behind what were called these amiibo figures. Now, what are the amiibo? The amiibo essentially were the last of what were called the toy to life, uh, toys to life genre of gaming that was popular popularized by uh, the Skylanders series and ver and Lego Dimensions, which was the last one of this sort of series, um, at least alongside Castlevania, Castlevania, uh, Skylanders. 
to sort of do this sort of thing. Of course, until Amiibo came along, which surprisingly still exists to this day. I'm kind of impressed. And what's funny is that Amiibo does the least amount of functionality for the games. Uh, at least with select Amiibo, that is. Because most Amiibo these days just unlock little bonuses in the games. Like, it'll give like it'll give you, like, maybe, like, a refill of, like, of, of ammo in a game, or it could give you, like, a costume or something, or give you some sort of points in the game, right? But with Samus Returns, they decided that they were going to lock an entire game mode behind these figures. And here's the thing. Nowadays, it's really, really bad uh, if you want to try to get fusion mode because uh, the Amiibo are super overpriced now. First of all, that's mostly just due to the fact of the, of, that they're valuable nowadays for collectors. But also... Um, these Amiibo were a limited edition type thing, which is terrible because I was really hoping that with the sequel, Metroid Dread, uh, that they were going to reissue them. But of course, typical Nintendo, they don't do that. So, yeah. Um, and how ridiculous are the prices for those Amiibo? Well, let me tell you. Just the other day, I saw a listing for the Amiibo, and get this, they were selling the figures, the two-pack, for $300. About as as much as a as a new as a brand new uh, uh, full full function Nintendo Switch model. What is that crap, right? So yeah, really stupid that they did that. Thankfully, with Dread, they didn't do anything like that. So thank God. But still, um, it was. It's just really unfortunate that people like me will never actually get to play Fusion Mode. But still, at least I could show you guys normal and hard modes. And also with this game, there's another mechanic called the Chozo Memories. Which uh, essentially are, are these little um, vignettes, I guess, of um, the different... Um, mo diff of different of they're basically vignettes of uh, different events that led up to the events of this game, right? Samus Returns. So, um, and those could be unlocked by gathering multiple different items and different upgrades throughout the course of the game's runtime. You can unlock them. Now, in this one, I will actually, uh, use pictures from the Metroid Wiki website, uh, at the end of this playthrough, um, final episode, whatnot. Uh, so that way you guys can actually see them, because honestly, as much as I love this game, I can't be bothered to get every single upgrade in this game. And every single energy tank, every single missile tank, because good god, they are just, they are really, some of them are really tricky to get to, and others are just stupidly easy to get to, which, uh, I, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not like I haven't tried, it's just that when I did try, it was really, really just painstaking to do it, and... But still, that doesn't detract from the game at all, and that's not to say that I'm just lazy, it's just that for, it's not something for me. But I know for others, like, uh, I, like just random name drop here, uh, the completionist, he would definitely do. But definitely not me. I'm definitely not that kind of person who would do that. But still, um... I will show you guys Chosen Memories there uh, in the final episode of this series. And... But that being said, let's just swiftly get back to the actual gameplay at hand here, shall we? Oh, good god. Hey, dude. I'm gonna get out of my way, please. Oh my god, that guy almost shocked me. Hey, dude. Yeah, yeah get out of here. So what I'm doing right there is what's called a melee counter, and that's a new addition to the game. Essentially what you do is right at the right at the moment an enemy tries to attack you, you hit the X button, and as you can see, Samus will swing her arm like a mace, hitting the enemy, and then using a full charge shot to counter the attack. And what's nice is that unlike, like for example, the God of War series that has like a button input over the head of the enemy to indicate a counter, this one has an audio and sound cue to, to tell you that, which I think is super so much better and I think more games of this style should do that should have like a gimmick like this and do it in this sort of fashion where now of course most people complain that the melee counter 
uh, makes the game a, a bit too easy. But here's the thing. For me, I don't see it as it makes the game easier. I see that as to make the game a lot more interesting. That, and it makes this game a feel a lot more like a hostile planet rather than, uh, rather than, you know, not being that. So... With, with that being said, we're moving on to the next Metroid here. Just gonna counter this guy out of the way. Missile this guy in the face. Get this guy with a shot. And with my speed. There we go. So. And uh, now let's get to some negatives right off the bat. So right off the bat, I don't like the, the, the beam system with this game. Because here's the thing. In previous Metroid games, uh, for example, Metroid Fusion... Uh, beams would actually stack. Uh, like, for example, once you get the charge beam and then you would get some other beam, they would stack over each other, right? But in this one, no. They're all on a touch screen, and you have to touch the touch screen to actually change beams. This is, this is just inexcusable. We have a perfectly good button right here that could have been used to change the beams, but no, they decide not to use them. That's just stupid, at least in my opinion. Another complaint uh, that we're going to get to later is that some of the Metroid boss fights are way too repetitive. And, of course, uh, I'll, I'll explain this more once we actually get to the Metroid boss fights, uh, boss fight variant in question that annoys the heck out of me with this game. But, still, um, let's, but, let's see, is there any other negatives I have really to say at this point in time? Um, I've actually heard complaints uh, from others that the 360 aiming is a bit weird, and um, so it is in, in this kind of a kind of a gimmick, you know. But for me, I don't see the 360 aim as a issue, as it is a much needed improvement. As in previous Metro games, you would have to kind of awkwardly position yourself and shoot. Um, at, at various targets and break various walls to progress, right? But now, all you need to do is just hold the L trigger, Samus will stop moving, and then you just use the circle pad to move your way around, which is great. I think that's awesome, because that makes hitting targets, navigating around so much easier than it ever was before. And it's just kind of baffling to me that people have said and still say that it's weird and awkward. As to me, I don't, I don't see it as that. I see it as it just makes Samus feel that much more like a person, like a real person, right? Like a real person would aim at a target, right? And would be able to move around pretty much in every direction to hit something, right? So it's like, what's the point of of complaining when that sh when that should be an improvement that shouldn't be something to complain about but anyway i'm gonna stop ranting here before before i get you know too deep into it but into that but anyway just moving on to the next metroid fight here in this case this is another alpha metroid so we're just gonna shoot this guy up if this guy could stop dodging me and just accept defeat that would be really cool there we go, he did. <laughs> so, with that being said, we're just going to grab this next bit of uh, DNA here, and I think, okay, that's actually all four Metroids, jeez. I, f I always forget how fast this game goes, especially for me, who actually, you know, has played this game, and uh, I've actually uh, played this game um, a little bit more even after that stream, uh, not stream, but my first uh, initial playthrough of this on the channel. So now I'm at 53 runs right now. Yeah, think about that. 53 times I've played this game on its own. And most of those replays were done in multiple days. And some of them even multiple weeks. Like, not, not, like, like, and what I mean by that is, like, I, it's that there have been times where I just start up the game, I beat it, like, I started up in the morning, and then I beat it in the afternoon, and then there are some times where I start it, where I start it, like, early in the week, right, I play it, and then by, and then by, like, the middle, or sometimes I'll wait till the end of the week, just really depends on, just really depends on the week and what's going on at that time, um, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and just, 
beat it, and then that following week or the week after, I'll just start it up again and repeat the same thing. So, so yeah, you can definitely and you can definitely tell that I've definitely learned a thing or two about this game and how to really get good at speedrunning it. Because here's the thing. Um, for, for a while, when I first got this game, I never thought I would be at this point where I'm at now, where I don't even have to think about progression. I just know where I'm going. I just, I, all I do is I just move, shoot, do, do and, and just, you know, just smooth, just swiftly move my, work my way along. But, uh, and more so, I never thought I would ever be able to speed run this game, but then, but then again, my ninth run, uh, I actually did get it, and I did post it on my Discord, uh, server, by the way, uh, do join the Discord server, please, but anyway, I normally don't promote the Discord server, but in this case, I will promote it, it's, it's actually been getting a lot, uh, better since its initial days of its creation, but these days, the server's gone a little bit quiet uh, these days. And that's what I was just doing part two, of course, as you guys may know. I'm still in college at this point in time. Uh, still working through that. I'm almost done with my first term of college, but... Um... What else? Oh, that, and I just haven't really been inclined to really do any sort of, like, voice chats or to really do much improvements on the server since I feel pretty good with the server's sort of infrastructure as of now. I don't really feel like there's any real improvements to do at this point in time. But, uh, and guys, I will say right now, I do apologize if it sounds like I'm rambling because I am, because I'm just trying to think of things to say here. But, um... What's it? Uh, where was I? Right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's a bit of train of thought here because I'm trying to focus on the game and talk at the same time. And as you guys can tell, I'm having quite a hard time doing that right now. So, because there is a lot on my mind at this point in time. Because, as I explained earlier, I'm still trying to figure out what to do for my, um, what to do for my, uh, for the channel and the server going forward. Uh, which, as I already explained, uh, the server is pretty much exactly where I want it to be at this point in time. I don't think I want to improve it. But for the channel, I still feel like there's improvements that need to be made. And I'm just trying to figure out what it is I want to improve upon. But um, that, and of course with college and everything, it's just been absolutely exhausting. Like, you guys have no idea. It's just, it's really been wearing me out, but... Right, but as you guys can see, I am still getting playthroughs. Nah, stupid dude. Uh, still trying to get playthroughs out to you guys in a timely fashion. So that way you guys don't think that I'm dead or something. Because I know I'm going to get those comments eventually asking, like, are you dead? Yeah, and I'm going to have to say, no, I'm not dead. I'm just busy. <laughs> and I have a lot on my plate right now. Um, and that's not even counting in. Like, um, of course having to manage, um, you know, my social profile, um, on Discord with my friends and everything, and of course, um, you know, there's, it, it, bottom line, there's just a lot going on, that's all that really needs to be said here, that there's a lot going on, so, um, so that's why this playthrough's coming out when it is, that, and... Um, that's the reason why playthroughs, let alone streams, have been very sparse in nature than they were before. But you guys probably knew that, uh, from the moment that you guys have noticed, because I'm pretty sure you guys might have noticed the, the, uh, increase in, uh, Twitter review videos and stuff. And... Uh, mostly, and, and mostly why there's been so many tour reviews coming out is because, first and foremost, they're easier for me to, to, to make than a stream, as a stream requires a little bit of setup from me. That, and of course, I actually, that and I actually have to be, you know, in the mood to actually stream and actually, you know, do the stream for the allotted time that I do. Uh, that I set up um, early on for my streams, but um, lost train of thought again. Dang it! 
So, uh, yeah, just got an, just got the next down ability, which is a lightning armor. So this is quite a nice little upgrade here, as it allows us to uh, move past those red plants that were hurting me before. That, and now I can just swap these bugs out of the way just by countering, or just by doing the melee counter motion at them, which is pretty cool. Nice little bit there that they don't tell you you can do, but... But that's what Metroid's all about, right? Exploring and figuring out what, sh what the full extent of your abilities, of your abilities and the capabilities that they, that your upgrades possess, right? So, just gonna go over here, shoot that guy, dip, dip, dip and then blow this up, dip. and then kill that guy, and, dip, and over here. All right. So, I normally skip this upgrade, but in this instance, I might as well get it. So, let me just... If I could actually shoot the freaking blocks, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Hit that. Hit that. Go over here. Alright. Got it. So, now I can go up here. Shoot, shoot. Oh, I need my Aeon again. There we go. Aeon ability. Okay. Why did I turn that off? I need that again anyway, because plants can kind of get up. There we go. That, that guy, that guy. No, what? How did I miss? Okay, there we go. Yeah, you do, you do that. Okay, and then I'll just hibbity hoobity my way up here. And all is good. Okay, use elevator, yes. <laughs> So, moving swiftly on, we're now in, where are we at now? We are in area two, okay. So, just had to quickly refresh um, where I was at, so let me just quickly go ahead and, oh jeez. These little guys. Those guys are called, uh, I believe they're called dribbles. I could be wrong on that. No, actually, that's the yellow version. The green ones are something else. I forget what they're called again. But, uh, keep going that way. Thank you. So, I'm just gonna kill that guy, kill that guy. Go up here. Kill that guy. Alright, next Metroid, right here. Yep, and dodge you, yeah, dodge you again, and dodge you again, okay. Would you like to come down here? Thank you. So I can mess your face up. Hi right, buddy, you're dead. And that is that for him. He is dead though. So... With that being said, let's just move swiftly on. Just gonna kill that guy again. Yeah, let's move swiftly along. Okay, this guy would not kill me. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into this area. Because may as well, right? Because, alright, so next up here, what we're going to get is, uh, we're going to get a suit upgrade right now. And, I gotta say, uh, I, I, I really do like the music for this area. It's, I know it's going to be hard to hear over my commentary, but still, love the music for this area. As a matter of fact, sometimes I'll just listen to this when I'm working um, uh, in, on my office computer. So, good stuff. Alright, so now we get a brand new upgrade, and in this case, now Samus is looking a lot more like she does on my uh, various different pieces of uh, merchandise that I have, <laughs> and that is the Vario Suit. And essentially what Vario Suit does is it allows us to go into hot places. Uh, indicated by the red glowing aura of the doors, like this, for example. 
and it also decreases our, our decreases damage taken by 50%, I believe. Yeah, 50%. So, good stuff. Kill those guys. Those enemies were called wall fires, by the way. So I just gotta kill this little wall fire over here. And then grab this. We'll upgrade. And then we're just going to hit that. Hit that. And hit this guy on the way. Go through that. Really? I did. There you go. Okay. Now we're moving on to the Metroids that I have the biggest problem with with this game. And that is the Gamma Metroids. The next evolution in their... In, in, in the Metroid species. Uh, so... Um, with these ones, there's two different types of Gamma Metroids in this game. There are these ones that actually, you know, are more like a traditional Metroid fight that we've seen up to this point. And then, of course, we have, um, the, the, what I like to call the Runner variants, which are essentially exactly that. You fight them, they take a certain amount of damage, and then they proceed to run into another room, and you have to chase them. At first, it's actually a pretty cool mechanic. But then it, but it quickly gets annoying the more you fight these things. And, uh, that, and there's way too many of them you fight in this game. I haven't actually kept count, but there is, like, way too many. Way too many gammas you fight in this game. So, because I think you, because I know you fight, like, only a select few Alpha Metroids, you fight a select few of these gammas, you fight a select few of the variants after this, uh, variant... And then I think you only fight, like, what? Only, like, a couple of the, uh, latter of the final, uh, regular evolution of the species. So, it's just, yeah, it's really, really kind of unfortunate that the bulk of them, the bulk of the Metroids you fight in this game are those, are the Gamma variant that we just fought. Okay, that guy's done. That. And we get our next beam upgrade, which is the wave beam. Okay. Zoom out the screen just a little bit. And there we go. So wave beam essentially allows you to hit through objects now, which allows us to hit this little door creature, which I believe is called a uh, Taramarga. Could be wrong on that. And, uh, yeah, you just hit through this little wall thing, which is normally blocked, uh, because you don't have the wave beam to go through the little blockade it puts up for itself, to defend itself from its, from attacks, so. Let me just go up here, and we go here, hit this dude, in the door, this guy. Hit that little fire there. Hit that guy. Okay. Go down. Go out. Okay. Okay. Get that guy out of the way. Okay, go down here, and there is a missile upgrade or missile pack in here, which of course I could skip, but like, why would I skip it when it's so easy to get, relatively easy to get, so. 
Oh, and uh, for, I didn't name this guy, I don't think, in my original playthrough. That little, this little purple cloudy smoky effect, this, those are actually bee-like creatures called the Fleech Swarm, is what the name of those are called. So. Cool stuff. Slinky dink around. Hit that guy. Hit this dude. Those. Oh yeah, I didn't name these creatures in the, my original playthrough. These things that are coming from the walls are called rock icicles. Or ceiling, I should say. That's what those are called. Don't ask why they're called rock icicles. I'm not the one who named them. <laughs> but... That being said, we're just gonna swiftly head back the way we came. And of course, carefully moving through the fleet swarm, quote unquote carefully, and trying not to get hit by these gravits over here. Go up here. Okay. Did not want to. Did not want to do that. But okay, this works. Okay, let me go right here. Okay, that works. That works. And now we get our next upgrade, which is the high jump boots. Essentially, these allow Samus to jump higher. That's really all this does. If the name wasn't already obvious as to what it does. So now we just gotta hop our way out of this little room here. Of course, try and not get hit by that goober over there. Yep. And, okay. Nope. No, no, no. Ah, uh, this guy. There we go. Okay. Thankfully, I am having... I do have my lightning armor on. Because otherwise, I would be just... I'll be taking up all the damage right now. Dang it. I just for some reason decided to just stop working. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through this little passage. Shoot this guy down here. You know what, might as well destroy this wall fire, why not? Kill that guy. Okay, another grab it, kill that. And... No! Come that way. Okay, and now we can leave the area. Well, not the area entirely, but just this section. Yeah, so. Now that we have left that, we can now move swiftly on. And if you guys notice any weird little specks on my 3DS screen, that is actually dust trapped within the screen because, um... Because, th see, the 3DS has two layers to its top screen. You have this protective outer coating, and then you actually have the actual screen underneath it. And the previous tenants, because I did get this refurbished from GameStop, um, I, I don't know if I explained that in the past, but, uh, yes, this is a refurb from GameStop. I got this particular 3DS from... Uh, they somehow got dust trapped under the screen, and I have not found any places near me that are willing to actually repair it. I would repair it myself, but like, uh, I nearly broke an uh, my another 3DS I have. Uh, in this case, it was the 3DS XL, the original 3DS XL. So I'm not really all inclined to really fix it, and plus it's not even all that noticeable anyway. But of course, when you do have the system off, it does look a bit uh, disgusting, but... Yeah, I can't really do much about it at this point. Unless I happen to f actually find a place that actually would actually take in my system and repair it. Uh, yeah. So. Alright, so next up here is a actual, like, uh, a non-Metroid boss. In this case, this is Arachnus. He's a predatory species. 
um, on SR388. And funny enough, this is the last of his kind on the planet. And we're just going to kill him too, apparently. Because why not, right? But then again, he was, you know, then again, he did just attack us, even though, of course, I shot him in the back, but still, I'm not going to question the logic of a Metroid game, you know? I'm just going to kill this guy. Can he die? There we go. Bye, buddy. And now we get the Spring Ball. And what does Spring Ball do exactly? Well, the name's pretty obvious. It allows you to jump in Morph Ball form. Yeah, the fact that as something as simple as this is an actual upgrade in this game, yeah, it's a bit weird. But then again, it was. Then again, they did this as well in uh, what is it? In the original Return of Samus. So uh, thankfully, in the sequel, Metroid Dread, they don't do that. She just automatically does that as a default move, which is great, as that's how it should be. But eh, Metroid games are always changing things up. So every time, so. Nothing's truly ever consistent with these games, aside from the story. So... But... Kill that guy. Kill that guy. Okay. Would you like to die, sir? Thank you. Thank you very much. Kill that guy. Ooh. Okay, I don't know why I went down here again, because I don't need to do that, but okay. And now for this part, that's kind of annoying. Uh, so you have to use the Spire Ball, which, by the way, I didn't explain what it does, but essentially allows you to, as you can see, crawl up walls and ceilings by holding the L button whilst the Morph Ball form. Uh, yeah, this part's annoying because you have to do, you have to basically hold Spire Ball all the way up. And first time I did this, not even kidding, it actually cramped up my finger a little bit. I don't know why they did it like this. I don't know why there isn't an option to change it to be instead of like you have to hold the L trigger, like you could just tap it once and then just tap it again to disable it. But eh, whatever. I guess it makes it a little less, you know, boring, I guess, to use the spider ball. So I can't complain too much as they did everything else pretty much right. And again, with how linear Metroid 2 was, and the remake as well is, I guess it only makes sense that they would do it in that sort of way, right? So, plus more modern Metroid games do that, where you have to hold down a button and then move in the morph ball form to, um move around ceilings and walls and whatnot. Though what's weird is that I believe it's Metroid Prime 3 and Metroid Prime 2, uh, you actually have to move on specific rails and ceilings in order to use the uh, spider ball, which I think is absolutely stupid, but eh, I guess. But but then again, if you really think about it, for, for a game for, for 3D titles, I guess it makes more sense to have it um, limited to certain surfaces, so that way you're just not cheesing the entire game, right? So, makes sense, if you think about it that way. But shoot that guy, shoot that guy, shoot that guy, okay. Well, I can actually dodge him, that's fine. He wasn't, he, he's not too much of an issue. Shoot that guy here. Uh, no, 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 okay, there we go. Okay, let me just quickly take that guy out. And shrinkity-doo around. Bam. Good, good, okay. Okay, break that. Okay, next metric fight. This time, and yet again, it's another Alpha Metroid, as, as per usual, because this game loves throwing Alpha Metroids at you at the start. There we go. That guy is now dead. And we can now get ourselves another bit of DNA. So now we are at five Metroids we have defeated right now, so we only have, like, three more to kill in this area. So, so far, guys, we're doing pretty good. So, I think unlike last time where I did, I believe it was three areas per, per, 
per episode. I think I'm going to try to stretch it out a little bit longer by doing two areas per... It's by going through two areas completely per video. So after we do area two here and complete it, we're going to stop the video there. Just so that, that way, again, we can stretch it out a bit more. Unlike last time, where it was cut down to three episodes because we did three areas per episode. And considering there are eight total areas in the game that we have to explore, um, and that's not including the surface uh, that we were that we started on, yeah, that made it go really quick. And especially with how good I am at this game, yeah, we need we need all the episodes we can get, right? So that way it's not just three lousy episodes, right? So, that guy, and... Right. Gonna shoot this guy up. Die! Oh, you're gonna run? Where do you think you're gonna go, bud? Ah, if I could actually jump properly. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna try and hit me. Nice try. But it's time to die. Thank you. Thank you for dying. Okay. <laughs> Where did? I don't know why I said that so politely. Like, thank you for dying. Like, like, like he had a choice. But anyway. That guy over there. But. audio got all messed up. Okay, there we go. The audio fixed itself. Alright, come here, dude. Alright, you're dead. Okay, I think that's the last metro to this area. Yep. So now we only have 27 metroids left to go in the, uh, on SR388, so... We have plenty of Metroids to go through. Plenty. But of course, we're gonna work through them pretty quickly here. So, let's go ahead and head back to the Chozo Steel, and then we are going to end the video. Because again, we want to make sure, because this time we want to try and stretch out uh, this playthrough. So that way it's not just three episodes. Can I actually hit that? There we go. Okay. Right, teleporter, perfect timing. And can I head back here? Yep. Alright, perfect. So now we're just going to quickly teleport back to uh, the start of the area, right here. Or roughly around the start of the area. Kill that guy real fast. I'm just gonna... Okay. So, got one more of these little opening animations. Here. Alright guys, with that being said, um, that's going to end it for this video. Uh, so next episode, uh, which of course will be coming out tomorrow, um, by the time you guys see this actually get uploaded uh, to the channel, uh, we will be um, going into Area 3, and Area 3 is where the bulk of the Metroids uh, for this game are going to be in terms of boss fights, as there are going to be a total of 10 of them that we have to defeat um, in 
the in that area which if you haven't noticed already on the chozo seals the maximum amount of little cells that can be open is 10. so yeah we got quite the long uh, journey in area three but with that being said thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you guys uh, in the next episode later read squad and have a good one